What's up everybody? We got a Z726X here and today I'm going to show you how to replace the spark plugs. One thing to mention is that before I do any work on my equipment, I always make sure to clean it up first. For this machine, I just use some standard car wash soap, some degreaser, rags, and soft brushes. I use a garden hose, I don't use a pressure washer, and I towel dry it with some old bath towels. It's much more pleasant to work on a clean machine. Again, today we're replacing the spark plugs. It actually doesn't have to be done until 500 hours, but this machine was used when I bought it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it, so I'm starting out fresh. Uh, what you're gonna need for this, your spark plug boots are here on the back. What you're gonna need uh, is a 13 16 um, spark plug remover, or honestly, you could probably just use a socket. Just be careful not to drop the plug. Uh, I don't know what the millimeter equivalent of that is, but that's the one I have and it fits. Uh, you'll need a torque wrench that can do 16 foot-pounds of torque and you'll need your two plugs and some dielectric grease. You want to put some dielectric grease onto the ends of these inside the boot so it doesn't seize on there. Um, but that's it. But before I get started, uh, really important, you want to clean all around here. You don't want anything to get into that cylinder. So you want to get some compressed air and blow that out really good. And then what I'm also uh, found these ports on the top. You take this 10 millimeter out and this pops out of here and it gives you access down into there. You can blow out some of this. You can see I have some grass kind of, it's hard to point to, but stick in like around here and stuff. I want to get all that grass and stuff out of there um, just cause. So I'm going to use some compressed air down into there. And then there's another one on the front um, that I'm going to take off this one and that will give me access to that plug. So anyway, uh, I'm going to blow that stuff off and then I'll take this plug out. plug out and then you put your new one in and you torque it it's nothing too complicated about it uh, I recommend doing this when the engine's not super hot because you're threading right into the into the uh, head or the cylinder and you don't want to accidentally cross thread um, those warm threads so I recommend doing it when the engine's kind of cool so there's the plug. I don't know, it doesn't look terrible. But um, this one looks better for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and put the new one in. And be real careful, tighten these by hand. Do not use any kind of tools yet until they're tightened down. You do not wanna cross thread. And if you do happen to start cross threading, back it back out. Take your time. But once you get that in, set your torque wrench to 16 foot pounds. And there it is. So now the other thing I always do is uh, take a little bit of dielectric grease and get it down inside of that boot. Um, and then I put a little bit on the end of the plug too, just like that. And then when you put your boot on there, that'll stop that from getting kind of seized up and corroded in there. It'll give you a nice, clean connection. And then we'll do the front. Again, I'll pop this off of here. Just take this bolt out of here. This just gives you access to get down in there and blow some air. Just gives you a nice way to clean some of the grass out of here. Just like that. There you go, boots off. Okay, I did manage to get my ratchet in there. I haven't figured out yet how I'm gonna get my torque wrench in here to torque this. So this may wind up one of those cases where you just torque it to what you think is correct. I did torque the other side so I kinda know how tight it feels like, but I'm really big on torquing things when you can, especially something like a spark plug. But yeah, this bar here is really inconvenient. I do find that having this cover off also makes it really nice for being able to see down in what you're doing. You'd be, you'd be working kind of blind without it. So there's the other plug. Uh, it doesn't look terrible. 
I could probably just wire brush them and clean them up, but they're two bucks to get a new plug or three bucks. It's worth it in my opinion. Let's see if we can get this new one in here. Again, use your hands. Do not cross thread this. That is one of the most expensive mistakes you'll ever make if you do that. All right, we got it in there. Again, I don't know if I can get my torque wrench on there. We're gonna try. All right, the way I managed to get it in here is using my smaller torque wrench and a universal joint, which I never recommend a universal joint when you're doing torque, but it's the best I got. Um, I did the front one and I could kind of tell how tight it was, so. That's how I'm gonna do it. I, I don't, I'm sure there's a tool that could get me in there, but I'm gonna call it good. Uh, you know, the last thing I'm gonna do is put the dielectric grease on this boot and the plug, just like I did the other side. Keeps it nice and clean. Keeps it from seizing up. And then slide your boot back on there. And you're good to go. Plugs are changed. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in other zero turn maintenance videos, check out my channel. I have a playlist dedicated to the maintenance I've done on my Kubota zero turn. I'll keep adding videos to it as I do more and more maintenance. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. It'll tell the YouTube algorithm to send this video out to others like you. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to get notifications of my new videos, and check out the description for some of the links to the things that I use during the video. Thanks again.